If I release one ball from here, what will happen? The common sense of most of us tells that after the hitting, the remaining four balls may move forward with a lower speed. But what happens in reality is something else. Exactly one ball leaves on the other side and the process repeats. Let's study the interesting physics behind this device, Newton's cradle, as usual with help of animation. Newton's cradle was not invented by Sir Isaac Newton. However, to predict this machine's behavior, you have to understand Newton's laws of motion, especially Newton's third law of motion. The third law of motion gives birth to a more straightforward conservation of momentum. The conservation of momentum principle simply means that the momentum of the system of objects without an external force is the same before and after its interaction. During a collision like this, energy loss is very minimal, so you can assume the energy of the balls before and after the collision is the same. If you apply conservation of momentum and energy to a simple two-ball case like this, you can see that the first ball will come to a rest and the second ball will continue its motion. First, let's examine why most of us think that after the collision, the four balls go forward at a reduced speed and the collided ball moves backward. When we analyze the problem, our mind groups the first four balls as a single object and makes an intuitive prediction. This is what would have happened if the first four balls had been glued together. In fact, this motion completely satisfies both the conservation of energy and momentum. You can check the cases before and after the collision. Both the conservation of momentum and energy are balanced here. Then why is this consequence not occurring in actual practice? In reality, these four balls are separate. As soon as the released ball hits the first, the momentum and energy transfer happens only between those two balls, which means we should apply conservation of momentum and energy only between those two balls. When we do so, the only solution we get is that the second ball gains the velocity of the first ball and the first ball comes to a rest. This process is repeated between the second and third balls and so on, and finally the last ball leaves from the other end. The same process is now repeated from the left side, resulting in an interesting pattern of motion. We hope that your concept of conservation of momentum has improved thanks to this interesting device. Thank you.